tonight. NBA Finals in Boston. Game one, all Warriors through three quarters, and then the final frame happened. And what a different story that told. Celtics outscored them 40 to 16. They took a 1 0 lead in the championship round. Then the Warriors made their own run in game two, outscoring the Celtics by 21 points in the third and route to an easy victory. It was their largest point difference in a finals quarter in franchise history. And Draymond Green making his presence known in a big way in game two, picking up a tech in the first quarter, holding Tatum and Brown to a combined one of ten shooting. I want you to hear what the Boston coach, Ime Udoka, said about Draymond Green's impact. Listen. I don't think it's the talking as much, I mean, as the physicality that they brought that was noticeable. And uh, we know, obviously, what, that's what Green does. I told him if I was a player or who I was, I'd probably get a double technical immediately. But that's not everybody. And so do what you do and block it out or, or meet physicality, physicality with physicality. Okay, so I know that I'm the man who just picked a fight with Damian Woody, so, so I don't want to make it seem uh, like I'm just completely out of control this morning. But did Ime Udoka just challenge his players to be more physical with Draymond Green, to be in his face, to match him intensity-wise? And if so, what should that make us expect tonight? It should make us expect a very physical and chippy game. And I think that's the key component of this. I, look, I don't think you should get distracted and try and do bait Draymond Green into technical fouls or double technical fouls. You should bring a level of physicality that matches his intensity and his physicality. And lost in all of this, by the way, lost in all of this, is how good Draymond Green was defensively in game two and how good he's been in the playoffs defensively. Players are shooting 10% less than their normal shooting percentage when guarded by Draymond. That's best of any player in these NBA playoffs. Again, I've been covering the NBA playoffs a very long time. I can't remember the last time I heard a coach say, well, if I was out there on the floor and he is a former player, I'd get a double yeah. technical with him immediately. That's if, if you're a player and you hear your coach say that, what is your response? Uh, well, he, he's certainly giving you the go ahead to uh, engage in the chippiness. For mm -hmm. sure. And I played against Ime Udoka and he was that type of player. He, he was an instigator. He was a physical player. He would he would get in your skin and, and, and try to get underneath you as a defender. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I think tonight, you know, between the referees, whatever crew we have and and the Boston home crowd and then what happened in game two. Tonight's game is going to be very intense. But let's go to rainy Boston, which is where Wendy is taking cover, and he's live with us here getting set for tonight's game. How about the Draymond of it all, Wendy? Okay, Greeny, uh, you, Ime Udoka played about 350 games in his career. How many technicals do you think he got? Well, to hear him talk, he, got he would six. think like 300. How many? Six. Six? Six. He had six, six. technicals his whole career. Um, J.J. is right about the impact that Draymond Green had with his physical defense. The little thing with Grant Williams and the little thing with Jalen Brown had not, nothing to do with the outcome of game two. I would argue that the fact that he took, took nine fewer shots and had nine fewer misses in game two than, than game one was just as important as his defensive possessions. He was much smarter offensively in that game. So I would I would say that you know the, the technical fouls and stuff are overblown. The other thing I'm going to point out, we will know in about an hour who the crew chief is going to be. The NBA will announce it around 9 a.m. I expect it to be Scott Foster. Not because it has anything to do with what happened in game two, but Scott Foster typically officiates game three of the finals so they can bring him back in game six or seven. And Sheriff Scott Foster will take control of this game early on and set the tone for how it's going to be called and how the physicality is going to be allowed. What, what do you think of that? You, you just mentioned the officials, uh, and, yeah. and Wendy had mentioned that on the phone to me this morning, that he expects Scott Foster to get this game. That If you know the NBA, you know that he's one of those officials that, generally speaking, people know. What is your expectation for how that would impact tonight? Well, you know, I talked about this on Monday, actually, and, yeah. and I talked about the officiating uh, in the NBA Finals. These guys are all veterans. These guys have all graded out the best of the best right. over the course of this season and last season and throughout the playoffs. They're going to have this game under control. They're going to make sure that this, this chippiness or whatever you want to call it with Draymond and the Celtics doesn't take away from the actual game. But the fans are going to see that's the thing is that the fans are paying attention to all of this. And I've been at every home game that yeah. Boston has played for the last two rounds. The fans are going to be ready for this. They're going to be ready for him. Draymond's going to hear it tonight from the crowd. Yeah. Well, he's definitely absolutely going to hear it. And I, I said this yesterday. Draymond Draymond is a smart player. Yeah. He knows that this little uh, storyline is on everyone's radar right now. He's not going to do anything that's going to 
uh, jeopardize his availability in game three. I believe that now that's not to say somebody from the Celtics, maybe a Grant Williams, doesn't try to engage him. But I don't expect I expect Draymond to bring that same level of intensity and physicality, but not necessarily dirty play. Wendy, give me a quick final word. Go. Yeah, I think tonight it's more about the turnovers. Forget about the chippiness and the physicality and whatever. When the Celtics have 15 or, more, or fewer turnovers in the playoffs, they're 13 and 2. When they have more than 15 turnovers, they're 0 and 5. That's the game. That was the story of game two. It will probably be the story of game three. Fair enough. And yet the screen says, should they try to bait Draymond Green into more technical fouls? And I'm here for it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.